infectious diseases in part 2 you will have photographs so i would uh, tell you to go through some uh, dermatology atlas because the dermatological atlases are the best ones as they don't only manifest and tell about the dermatological problems but they also tell you about dermatological manifestations of systemic diseases that is why they are so important and they are complete in themselves so because the photograph will tell you more about the skin condition and they will ask you some systemic diagnosis all right <coughs> so we have a 42 year old gentleman who is diabetic and has presented with one day history of increasingly painful left leg this is what you see here okay which is the most likely causative organism group g streptococcus staphylococcus epidermidis group b streptococcus group a streptococcus or staph aureus what is the uh, diagnosis first Give me the diagnosis first, then we will move forward. Sir, D. No, what is the diagnosis? What is? What do you see here? What do you call this? What do you call this? the lower limb cellulitis okay lower limb cellulitis do you see it is progressing upwards yes sir progressing why is it progressing upwards and in this fashion i mean the facial planes what is this known as necrotizing facial it is not necrotizing <clears throat> so okay the answer is so the answer is answer is group b streptococcus which has got a very important toxin with it which is known as basically these are the skin eating bacteria and they have a very very important toxin which causes tissue lysis along the planes and this is how they move group b streptococcus is the answer which is causing ascending cellulitis so staph aureus and streptococci they are the uh, causative agents and group b streptococcus has a predilection for diabetic patients that's why it's causing this all right so always remember gbs group b streptococcus for ascending cellulitis if it turns black then it is necrotizing then of course streptococcus could have initiated it but then it got replaced by clostridium if and then there could be gas formation as well so if there were bully bulla gas formation then the answer would be clostridium all right Yes, sir. These are very important, and uh, uh, usually, if you have to check, you must get a positive camp test. These are all things of microbiology, but you need to remember them. Uh, MRCP guys, they they love to ask questions like this. A thirty-one year old lady presents with complaints of multiple joint pains ten days after returning from a holiday in Athens. She describes fit, flitting arthralgia beginning in both knees. migrating to both wrists her main complaint is more severe pain at in her right knee okay she is 31 she has been on a trip and now she has polyarthralgia on exam she is febrile she is fever also and this arthralgia is fleeting arthralgia 
टेम्परेचर इज वेरी हाई राइट नी इज वोलन वॉम एंड टेंडर Several pustular lesions are noted on the four digits in her left hand. Okay, HB is fourteen point four. Total leukocyte count is elevated at twelve. Platelet count is normal. Sodium potassium is okay. Serum urea is normal. Creat is slightly elevated. Anti nuclear antibody is negative. Our effector is negative. Blood cultures are negative. You perform a knee aspiration, and you find yellow turbid fluid. So, septic arthritis. Numerous polymorphs. Septic arthritis. Culture is negative. Okay. So, culture negative. Septic arthritis. Which one of the following gram stain of synovial fluid most likely to show? Gram negative coco bacillus, gram negative bacilli, negatively birefringent crystals, gram negative diplococci, intracellular, or gram positive cocci in clusters. So, what is the diagnosis? <clears throat> What is the diagnosis? Gram positive cocci in clusters. But I have mentioned gonococcal arthritis. What happened to them? So they are gram negative diplococci. Okay. So why is that? These Neisseria gonococcus is very difficult to culture. Oh. very difficult to culture so the history strongly suggests gonococcal infection she was on a trip so she might have been sexually involved so gonococcal infection standard aerobic and anaerobic cultures often fail to grow neisseria gonorrhoeae selective media required and uh, because it is an uh, it requires a little carbon dioxide to grow so these are the this picture is uh, i mean typical of gonococcal arthritis so treatment is ceftriaxone and azithromycin with a dual therapy doxycycline may also be used young people and their sexual transmitted diseases need not to be urogenital in nature and are very important from mrcp perspective because uh, these conditions are very prevalent in uk a 29 year old lady young female presented to genito urinary clinic complaining of a vaginal discharge she had seen her general practitioner 10 days ago who prescribed her some clotrimazole pessaries thinking of a fungal infection she had no relief she denies any itching but describes a malodorous especially following intercourse on examination there was a th thin white vaginal discharge with a ph of 5.9 which is acidic microscopic evaluation demonstrated lactobacilli with gram variable rods which one of the following is most effective condition what is this problem that me it to me it looks like bacterial yes so what would be the treatment of bacterial vaginosis metronidazole so what should be the answer here so the answer is e that is metronidazole okay we have got it right so metronidazole bacterial vaginosis common diagnosis in the women child bearing age it is malodorous fishy thin milky white discharge which is not itchy 
the fishy odor can be brought back by adding 10% potassium hydroxide to the vaginal discharge risk factors are intrauterine devices vaginal douching and increasing number of sexual partners it has been implicated in development of pid patients may be asymptomatic the first line treatment is metronidazole 400 mg twice daily for 7 days alternatively a single dose of 2 g metronidazole can be given to these patients okay this question we did yesterday also plasmodium plasmodium which one Healthy parent. Why? Healthy parent. Healthy parent. Why? <laughs> Why? No, 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 no. These are intracellular. See, this is the. What is PBF important for? What is the role of PBF in malaria? <laughs> Okay, let us let us talk about that. What is the role of PBF in malaria? Sir, to diagnose if it is malaria and uh, which uh, uh, which one which class like plasmodium uh, falciparum or whatever that okay. thin and thin will be. So one is to diagnose malaria. Mm -hmm. The second you said to diagnose the type of malaria. Yes. Anything else? Why PBF is so important? okay yesterday also i told you i'm telling you to today as well speak it once you read it it real yeah acha it real parasite you know okay five not the five so one minute dikhi sir if the degree of parasitemia is more than 5% you might be dealing with an impending chaos the patient will die in next 24 hours okay. so much importance is there for this is what i say stage the disease how will you stage malaria which treatment are you going to offer how aggressive you will be in the management you see it from the peripheral blood smear and usually the parasites inside the rbcs are like this one but you see falciparum is very notorious you see yes. two parasites here you see three parasites here you see four parasites here you see four parasites here you again see three here again see two and two and four and five here can you believe this amount of degree of parasitemia almost every rbc is having a, a a a plasmodium inside this is this patient is going to die in next 24 hours unless you act very fast this could possibly be black water fever this patient will develop cerebral edema and all so this is important the answer is definitely falciparum because the number of parasites per red blood cell are more yes. for malaria for vivax for ovel they are usually less than 2 i mean one is the norm but you see five five parasites in a single rbc this is classical of plasmodium falciparum screen is stuck okay so the answer is falciparum fine so the blood film shows ring forms within the rbcs some rbcs contain two or three parasites per cell typical of falciparum other forms unlikely have more than one parasite per rbc severe malaria is defined on the basis of pbf this is the importance this is the importance of peripheral blood smear in management of malaria is that clear yes sir so the next time you send peripheral blood smear of a patient suspected of malaria do make an effort and call the microbiologist see how many parasites are there per cell how much is the parasitemia yes all right 
it will help you treat the patient in a better manner okay this thoracic ct was performed on a 51 year old lady who came to you with dysphagia so this is the cardiac shadow this is the descending aorta this is the vertebral column fine what is this these are lungs this has to be esophagus it is a mega esophagus mega esophagus occurs in which condition so trypanosoma cruzii these are spotters you have to pick them up immediately without wasting time they will give you 100% marks so the answer is chagasic mega esophagus massively dilated esophagus containing food residue and what not chagas disease is caused by trypanosoma cruzii by set c fly okay rest everything is you know not important for this chagas and can you tell me why chagas disease happens or why mega esophagus happens because trypanosoma destroys the myentric plexus which is the plexus meant to keep the smooth muscle of esophagus in tone so when this plexus is destroyed the esophagus which had to be like this becomes like this okay yes. and what is the treatment then treatment is to treat the trypanosoma and sometimes to give uh, you know surgical correction to this uh, this mega esophagus you just cut it and turn it into a tube back again uh, 33 year old gentleman who is hiv positive cd4 count cell of only 90 he used to be an iv drug abuser and has been treated for pulmonary cox he is a pet lover as well does he have a cat oh he has more than four cats he previously complained of fever headache malaise and fatigue he is aphasic and now has come with grand mal seizure as well he is wasted he is febrile he has high grade fever of 100 he is anemic with hb of 8 blood pressure is normal on mri shows gallium enhancement lesion mainly in the basal ganglia cortico medullary junction this is the lesion kai sari hain ek yahan hai ek yahan hai ek yahan hai so what is this cat okay if history of cats was not there then <laughs> hiv positive hai na and cd4 count is less than 90 okay so herpes simplex cryptococcemia toxoplasmosis primary cns lymphoma tuberculoma so what is the answer <laughs> why history of pet okay okay ring announcement also no <laughs> ring announcement okay so toxoplasmosis is very common in hiv aids followed by primary cns lymphoma टिबरकलोमा विल आल्सो बी कॉमन सो द डिफरेंशियल यही रहेगा आपके पास एम आर आई शोज रिंग एनहांसमेंट लीजन ऑफ टेक्सोप्लाज्मा ऑफन फाउंड इन बेजल गेंगलियर देव प्रेफरेंस फॉर बेजल गेंगलियर कॉटिकोमेटरी जंक्शन डायग्नोसिस डज नॉट एंड हियर इट हैज टू बी कन्फर्म विद एंटी टॉक्सोप्लाज्मा एंटीबॉडीज एंड टाइटर हैज टू बी ग्रेटर देन वन इज टू टेन 
ok so step 1 is MRI with contrast step 2 is anti toxoplasma antibodies you can also do fundus because you can see toxoplasma granulomas in the eye as well in the retina as well bore to nahi ho rahe okay a 21 year old gentleman presents to genito urinary medical clinic is just 21 and he is attending a genito urinary clinic he must have been involved in some sexual activity he is homosexual and admits to having unprotected sex with a number of partners in the last two months he has no regular partner at present he reports he has been generally well apart from bad cold he had four weeks ago the bad cold was actually hiv acute infection zero conversion so he undergoes hiv test and comes out to be positive immediately cd4 count was done which turns out to be 660 cd8 count was done which is normal at present viral load is present so what is the next step even in india if the patient has viral load positive more than 40 in india we call it more than 40 but let us say more than 20 what is the next step come on yes you start treatment what treatment wonderful so let's find the answer can anybody repeat the uh, can anybody just read out the answers the all the options of this are options 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 all of them uh, first is six monthly monitoring start antiretroviral therapy when cd4 count is less than 350 and patient has a major infection or monitor three monthly if viral load increased to less than 1 lakh start antiretroviral therapy C is six monthly monitoring start antiretroviral therapy when cd4 count is less than 350 d is monitor patient advise him he does not need to start antiretroviral therapy currently as long as he uses barrier contraception in all his future sexual encounters. And last is start antiretroviral therapy as soon as suitable. Patient counseling as suitable patient counseling can occur. So the answer is start answer. antiretroviral therapy as soon as possible. You don't wait for anything. If the patient has positive viral load more than 20 or more than 40, whatever, you will start the treatment immediately without consideration of CD4 count. And yes. you will check this patient for tuberculosis as well. Yes. Immediately. All right. Even if the CD4 count is normal, you would rule out tuberculosis. before. Why? Because many drugs uh, that have to be given uh, for HART, we have to combine them with sometimes ATT and it becomes a little difficult. So we have to plan it accordingly. Okay. All right. Yes, so guidelines advise that HIV treatment should start no matter what their CD4 count, viral load or state. If they are having viral load, ka matlab hota hai ki we have confirmed the infection. Yes. Anti-HIV antibodies, ELISA, they are not confirmatory. Viral load is confirmatory. So once you have confirmed the viral load, you have confirmed the PCR, you are convinced the patient has HIV, don't wait for anything. Just start the treatment. All right. Baki cheezen to rahengi that he should have safe sex and all those things, but he has to be on antiretroviral therapy right away. Yes. All right. So, 33 year old IV drug abuser comes with three week history of non productive cough, fatigue, shortness of breath, and fever. Ye bhi HIV hai. Pakka. On examination, he has respiratory rate of 26 heart rate of 88 and was hypoxic on exercise. Those who attended yesterday's class, I told them, you know, in COVID, mein, we all started doing that six-minute walk test. 
but earlier it was done in cases of pneumocystis carinii always remember this it was a standard test in hiv patients to perform a 6 minute walk test why to identify those patients who have occult pneumocystis carinii infection because they immediately become hypoxic on exercise same way as covid patient would we would also describe covid as severe covid no when they would become hypoxic on exercises or desaturate on exercise same way pneumo cystis gerovicai or carinii whatever you want to call it it is basically uh, hypoxic on exercise look for this and mind you x ray may be normal in case of pneumo cystis so hemoglobin is 11.2 total count is low expected in hiv neutrophil count is also low lymphocytes are low chest x ray is normal which of the following investigation would be most appropriate to confirm the diagnosis ball 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 and what do you want to see in ball bas ball ball ke aage kuch nahi ball ki khal utaro yaar so you stain them silver staining genamine <laughs> gimza staining you find an intracellular pathogen theek hai which is pneumocystis why it is called pneumocystis because there are cysts inside the organism okay yes. so baal karke karna kya hai usko silver staining karna hai to identify the organisms all right so yes. pneumocystis gerovicai or carinii it is thought to be protozoan an atypical fungus that is not susceptible to fungus antifungals transmission is airborne hawa mein hai sabko milta hai lekin hiv mein infection karta hai insidious fever shortness of breath exercise induced hypoxia c it is a one of the criteria or features diagnosis is identification by silver staining methenamine silver or by pcr usually by induced sputum or bronchial velar lavage treatment is with treatment the potramoxazole but my patient has psoriasis and he is on methotrexate and we cannot we cannot combine methotrexate with cotrimoxazole so what do i do यही एम आर सी पी पूछता है जहां पे लोग सोचना बंद कर देते हैं वहां से वो पूछना शुरू कर देता है एवर हर्ड ऑफ पेंटामिडिन यू कैन गिव इट इन हेल्ड ऑल्सो सो देन कम्स दी रोल ऑफ पेंटामिडिन ओके ऑल राइट अ फोर्टी नाइन ईयर ओल्ड लेडी कमिंग टू यू विद रिकरेंट एपिसोड ऑफ डिस लोकलाइज टिंगलिंग ऑफ जेनिटेलिया एंड शूटिंग पेन्स Oh, this is some neuropathic virus. See, all the features of neuropathy are there: tingling, pain. Which is neuropathic virus that is very common? <laughs> And which herpes affects the genitalia area? <laughs> herpes simplex. And do you need? vesicular lesions to diagnose herpes nahi hai yahan pe nahi hai hongi kyun it is recurrent and herpes is a latent virus so it goes inside the nerves it stays around the nerves so when it becomes recurrent then it does not cause vesicles it only causes neuropathic symptoms so which of the following assertions is correct regarding genital herpes it is most commonly secondary to herpes simplex one infection transmission can occur in absence of lesions most primary cases present with symptoms topical acyclovir is the treatment of choice recurrent episodes tend to be more severe so what is the answer abhi aapne bataya ki herpes 2 hoga ye to pehla answer galat ho gaya yes sir transmission can occur in the absence of lesion this is what i said let's see most primary cases 
प्रेजेंट विद सिम्टम्स नॉट नेसेसरी टॉपिकल या साइक्लोवीर स्किन पे कुछ भी लगा दो जब तक वेसिकल्स नहीं है स्किन की ट्रीटमेंट की जरूरत ही नहीं है रिकरेंट एपिसोड टेंट टू बी मोर सिवियर रिकरेंट एपिसोड टेंट टू गेट माइल्डर एंड माइल्डर सो दी आंसर इज बी दैट जेनिटल हर्पीज कॉमनली कॉज बाय एच एस वी टू सिक्सटी परसेंट प्राइमरी केसेज आ रही सिम्टोमेटिक रिकरेंट अटैक्स टेंट टू बी शॉर्टर एंड लेस सिवियर वायरल शेडिंग कैन अकर इन दी एबसेंस ऑफ लीजन नर्व ट्रांस नर्व टर्मिनल से शेडिंग हो जाएगी एंटीवायरल ट्रीटमेंट रिड्यूस द सिवियरिटी ऑफ एपिसोड बट इज नॉट क्यूरेटिव टॉपिकल एसाइक्लोवीर नो नो बेनिफिट ओके अ फोर्टी नाइन ईयर ओल्ड लेडी वेंट टू टनजानिया सिक्स मंथ्स अगो फॉर अ थ्री वीक रिसेस शी टुक मैफ्लोकोइन एंड शी डिफॉल्टेड नाउ शी प्रेजेंट विथ फीवर राइगर्स मैफ्लोकोइन का हैज टू बी स्टार्टेड वन वीक बिफोर जर्नी एंड कंटिन्यूड वन मंथ आफ्टर जर्नी so she is suspected to have malaria gp tests blood slides thick blood slide shows parasites large with fragmented cytoplasm the thin film shows enlarged rbcs containing amoeboid parasites with schaffner's rods which are the following malarial parasites is causing the disease you know a, a recent malaria uh, is added in the southeast asia that is plasmodium naulesi so now there are five of them okay. so the answer is okay. yeah, yes okay. okay so incubation period of vivax can go up to 6 months sometimes it becomes chronic malaria caused by hypnozoites malaria episode happened 6 month after returning from africa picture of thin film and thick film are diagnostic of vivax falciparum is wrong because it can occur within 2 weeks it is thin film shows many ring formed crescent shaped gametocytes Naulesi is wrong because it usually affects apes and monkeys and is found in forests of Southeast Asia. Whale is wrong because it is quite rare. I haven't seen as of now. Incubation is similar to vivax. I mean, six months तक कर सकता है, but their parasites are more compact. Plasmodium leri is wrong. It is rare again. Incubation period two weeks. All right. Oh, thank you.